Up to now, we've been looking at how we can uh, change between our pages or components using the router link. The router link will place a button on our page, which we can click on to display the desired components. But there's also other ways we can use to switch between pages inside of our app. We can also do it programmatically rather than relying on these buttons. Earlier, we briefly looked at accessing the routers instance using dollar symbol router. This can be accessed inside of our script or inside of our template, and it gives us access to things such as params in our code. This also exposes many other things too, such as the ability to navigate using methods such as push. This means we can also build in navigation into things like our methods in the script, or also into any click listeners inside of our template. So for example, let's place in a level one heading anywhere inside of our app. And we'll just say site title. What we can do here is listen out for a click on this element where we can access our dollar symbol router and a method called push, which is going to push us to a desired location. So if this is a title, it would make sense to maybe link this back to our home URL. And let's see how this works inside the browser. So go to any other page, a bit messy now, but click on the site title. And this then takes us back to the home URL. We'll try one more, go to the user, click the site title, and this all works fine. And also we can make use of the push method and all the other methods which we're going to look at inside of our script and also the setup function. So if we go into our user view, inside of here we can also access router.push and make use of this inside of our script. So we'll try this out. We'll say router.push and we'll push to any made up URL, such so as test. And then what we'll do to try this out is we'll wrap this inside of a set timeout, pass in a function, which will run after two seconds. So we can cut this code out, paste this into our timeout. Let's go over to the page and jump into the user view. Then two seconds later, our function is run and we're pushed to forward slash test. So this kind of thing may be useful for pushing a user to the counter area after logging in, since we can also access this inside of our methods too. Let's now remove this set timeout and also go back to our app.view where we can take a look at another method called replace. This one is dollar symbol router.replace. And this, just like the router.push and all the other methods we'll discover, can also be used inside of the script setup. So let's give this a save. Click on the account or any other page and the site title. And again, just like the push method, we're also taken back to the home URL. So this works very similar to the push method, but there is a difference. When navigating inside the browser, each one of the pages which we visit is added to the previous history of entries. This is how we can use these back and forward buttons inside the browser. But the difference between these two methods is when using the push method, all of these entries are still added to the history of the browser. However, as it sounds with the replace method, it will replace the current entry rather than adding to. So to see this, let's refresh to clear the history. Click on the account. And now click on the site title to take us back to the home page. And now if we click on the back button, you would expect to be taken back to the account. We don't because this replace has replaced the previous route rather than added to the history. We can see the difference if we go to push, again refresh, we'll go to the account page, click the site title. But now, if we click the back button, since all of the history is saved in the browser, this is then taken back to the previous account page. Another router method we'll have access to is go, and this will navigate through the browser entries. As we just learned there, when we go through various pages inside of our application, all of these pages are stored in order inside the browser's history. We can then navigate back or forward through as many of these history entries as we want to. So if we wanted to go back two pages, when we click on this, we can use router.go, passing a value of negative two. So let's try this out. We'll go back to the home route. We'll go to the user. We'll go to the account. We'll go to profile. So now two steps backwards would be our user 
Click on the site title and we're taken back to the user route. If we were only going back or forward one single page, there is also two methods we can use, which is back and also forward. So we have access to forward and this doesn't need any arguments passed to this. We also have back, as you would expect. If we clear the history, go to the home, user account. And this takes us back one step to the previous history item, which is the user. There is also other router methods available too. And if you're interested in finding out more, you can find out more information on the view router documentation page. But for now though, these are some of the more common methods which you can use in your projects.